Good afternoon. In this presentation, I'm going to talk about the life cycle assessment of a hybrid uh, concentrated solar power plant, comparing different fuels operation. I'm from the um, Universidad Politécnica de Madrid, and this work was conducted by Guillermo San Miguel and me. The presentation is structured in four parts. Introduction, method, results and discussion, and conclusions. Concentrated solar power is receiving increasing attention as a um, technology capable of transforming solar radiation into electricity in a sustainable and cost-effective way. Hybridization facilitates startup operations, provides system stability, avoids freezing of heat transfer fluid, and increases uh, power generation. Nat natural gas fuel is used most frequently to these purposes. However, biomass alternatives allow to produce electricity that's fully renewable and locally available. Um, environmental issues are the main reason to uh, develop and implement renewable energies. But at this stage of development, it's of paramount importance that um, potential environmental impacts are quantified and considered so the um, CSP plants of the future can generate in a minimum environmental cost. Life cycle assessment is a methodology to assess the environmental performance of a product or system in all the, um, the, its life stages, from the extraction of raw materials to the disposal of um, components. It's also known as from the assessment from cradle to grave. It evaluates data collected in an inventory of processes and materials, and it has been largely used to evaluate energy systems. Um, this study is a um, LCA, life cycle assessment, of, of six different scenarios, three renewable fuels and three fossil fuels. Um, and the purpose is to compare the environmental per performance uh, with solar-only configuration where no hybridization uh, takes place. Sima Pro software was used for calculations. Um, the method of evaluation was recipe Europe 8 for the um, aggregation and quantification of impacts. And inventories were taken from engineers involved in the design and construction of, the, of CSP plants, but also from scientific literature and equipment database. These are some characteristics of the CSP plant under study, which is a um, 50 megawatts uh, parabolic through um, CSP plant located in Ciudad Real and uh, uses uh, synthetic oil as heat transfer fluid and has a 7.5 hours of um, heat storage system with molten salts. Its lifetime expectancy is 25 years and occupies an area of 200 hectares. 12% of the electricity generated uh, derives from the combustion of fuels and 16% of the electricity generated is consumed on site. The remaining 84% is poured into the grid. This is the flow chart of the system with all the life stages considered, from extraction of raw materials and manufacturing of components, construction of the CSP plant, operation and maintenance, and dismantling and waste management. These are some characteristics of the six scenarios. Uh, the fossil fuels are coal, fuel oil, and natural gas. The inventory of coal and fuel oil were taken from the corresponding Spanish processing equipment database. And in the case of natural gas, um, this data was adapted to the um, Spanish composite, um, imports of natural gas for last year. Wood pellets uh, are manufactured out of dried industrial resi residual wood with a 10% of moisture. In the case of mixed biogas, it comes from the co-fermentation of bio waste substrate and uh, manure from swines and cattle. And it has been assumed that it is upgraded to biomethane and injected into the natural gas grid. Wheat straw is transported and burned in the form of bales with a 10% of moisture. And cultivation and harvesting of wheat has been included into the inventory with an economic uh, basis allocation of 7.5%. These are the characteristic results um, of uh, the system. It represents the um, impact in selected categories uh, for a megawatt hour 
of, production, of electricity production. And for the, each scenario and also the solar only configuration mode. As you can see, solar only has the lowest impact in almost every category, especially in climate change and fossil depletion. The use of different fuels had a determinant effect on the environmental performance of the plant. Regarding to climate change, um, lowest scores are observed for uh, biomass derived fuels, but um, terrestrial acidification and freshwater, no, sorry, <laughs> human toxicity and freshwater eutrophication it is not so clear. In the case of um, coal, it has the highest values for every um, category. And uh, the use of different fuels doesn't have a significant effect on the depletion of water resources. This is the normalized profile for solar only operation uh, according to different life stages. As you can see, extracting a manufacturing phase has the highest impact. Um, however, um, in operation and maintenance phase, um, is going to change uh, quite a lot in the hybrid mode because uh, the um, impact for the fuel um, inventory are all uh, assigned to that, the, that phase. And here you can see uh, the changes because it represents the variation from the solar only normalized results to the uh, different fuel scenario results. The negative results for natural gas indicates a better performance of that scenario than in solar only configuration for that, those categories. And it has been attributed to the increase of electricity generation. <coughs> Natural land transformation is the, um, the category with highest differences uh, comparing to solar only, but also with a highest score uh, comparing to the other categories. The highest impact in the cold scenario for um, those categories are associated with the um, disposal of uh, coal, coal meaning spoils, which have a high concentration of contaminants, especially heavy metals. In the case of wood pellet scenario, the high, higher impact in human toxicity has been associated with the combustion emissions, which represent a 46% of the impact for the whole life cycle of the plant in this category. Some other uh, impacts in ecotoxicity and eutrophication has been associated with the um, pellet manufacturing process. In the case of acidification, uh, biogas results are quite similar to the other two uh, renewable fuels. However, it has been detected that uh, these uh, results and also the climate change results can change significantly depending on the end of life allocation method for the DG state. This is the um, single score profile, which represents the sum of weighted results for the endpoint method, which is oriented to damages. Um, so it represents like a single score for the whole impact of the plant. Uh, you can see that solar only is the best environmental option according to this method, followed by a renewable fuels scenario. Fossil fuels more than double the impact of the renewable ones. A resources category for wood pellets has higher impact than the other two renewable fuels due to the electricity consumption during pellet manufacturing, which represents the 19% of impact in the single score. Um, biogas higher impact in human health has been associated with the upgrading uh, to biomethane processes because it has emissions of uh, sulfur dioxide and hydrogen sulfides. To conclude, I will say that solar only operation is the best environmental option, but it generates less electricity. According to recipe endpoint method, biomass fuels are better than fossil ones, and coal is the worst scenario. Biomass fuels have a similar single score, but some differences in categories. In the case of a stress scenario, the main activity contributor to the single score and also to some other categories uh, impacts is with cultivation, with a 
25% uh, of the singular score impact for the whole life cycle of the plant. In the case of biogas, the higher impacts are due to the upgrading processes, which represent the 17% of the uh, single score impact for the whole life cycle. And in, in the case of wood pellets, the main impacts are due to the combustion emissions and pellet manufacturing. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>